right. Let's get this out of the way first. The thoughts, views, and opinions expressed on Tailboard Talks Firefighter Podcast are solely those of the speakers, guests, and host, and do not in any way represent the thoughts or views or opinions of any other employer, partnership, or sponsor. The material and information in this podcast is for general information purposes only and should be used at the listener's discretion. Welcome back to your table, dude. Thanks. Is it on? <laughs> Welcome back to your table. <laughs> This is definitely weird recording this late in the day. I feel yeah, like I guess we're a little here, later than usual, for, yeah. Time for lunch after yeah, I leave here. Actually, we're on the clock because Taylor will be home and <laughs> kick us out of here pretty okay, soon. Let's get this over <laughs> with. Um, is there anything more firefighter than me not being able to watch a show because I didn't work this week? It's uh, some week behind. <laughs> I was lame enough to even look to see if there were like free trials that you could get. But uh, I wish you could just, like I said, I wish you could just rent this series like i think you can six shows i think you can i think you can pay as you go on stuff okay but you I, that's the most late work i'm doing yeah. <laughs> I, was like, I have it already it's so. like 25 dollars like, yeah. an episode <laughs> yeah um yeah I, I was thinking the way over here i'm like that is one a very specific thing to firefighters and ship is like well i couldn't watch my show this week because yeah. i didn't go to i, I wouldn't on the pay wrong as day. you go for episode three yeah, i'd wait till episode four or just watch it tomorrow i did watch the recap it looked like there was a lot of really subtle deep stuff in episode there's three. some uh building going on plot yeah. building going on yeah yeah it was still a 20 minute long video on youtube of like his left shoe was untied which means that you know yeah he's half out of the underworld or some yep. stuff um so let's go and keep this this week's spoilers relatively short mm-hmm. um and i think it's going to be a kind of a quick episode in general there's just the two things to really run through yeah so what I, I wanted to bring up the topic that got submitted on Instagram because now I'm reading into things being a true detective season. And it said like more senior firefighters respu- refusing to take shifts on the ambulance. Mm-hmm. And it had senior in quotes yeah. of like, not really mm-hmm. like by, by a day or two. And yeah. now you're pulling kind of BS on it. That's, you know that. And I wanted to clarify that with you. Cause that's kind of how I took it after I read it the second time. Yeah. So um, I mean, obviously, I'm a terrible person to ask for it. Even I think though, you're the per- perfect I mean, person. We all did it. our time on the ambulance, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but as a senior person who hasn't been on an ambulance in 15 years, uh, <laughs> probably not the best to say like uh, this okay. is the way it goes. But <laughs> <laughs> tough. I kind of think you are though, because um, you took the I don't want to say righteous. You took the correct, sure af- afforded. Afforded. Pass off a good the ambulance, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, which was like, don't don't be afraid to back up what you've been saying for the past 10 years, basically. Mm-hmm. Do you want to talk about that at all? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the short story is is that we went to paramedic school. Uh, the city hit a budget. Not we. Well, I mean, I mean my, group, my group went to paramedic yeah. school. Uh, the city hit a budget crunch. Um, we graduated paramedic school, and about three months after that, the city asked for people to uh, de-stipend as paramedics, as paid paramedics for the city. And so everyone at the time was like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And four of us did. And uh, me having three months on the ambulance was obviously (laughs) uh, in the spotlight, but they didn't stipulate anything. So it was, I mean, I did everything according to the rules. And of course, uh, so four of us do. And literally the next day, all the people who were like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it, were MFing me afterwards. And like, yeah. you know, and it's like, well, you guys could have done it too. And you guys were all senior to me. You you had a better shot at me at not doing it. And yeah. so that was just the way it went. Did did you have some people that you were surprised were on your side with that too? Because I remember hearing some people who we thought would have been like, ah, you should really suffer through it because i could have and basically they were like yeah he they gave him the opportunity and you guys should have taken care of yeah so the the captain i was working for at the time was like a a bleed fire department blood like all over the place like rah rah everything and it took me probably three shifts of like walking over to his office and then turning around and walking away because i couldn't get up the guts to go tell him i was gonna do it (laughs) and uh then i walked in and i'm like hey uh, cap here's the here's the plan and uh, he's like all right. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, and then the union president, uh, who, uh, yeah, whatever. Yeah. He agreed too. <laughs> so I think that his was more to just, uh, you know, play games with the city. Yeah. Um, say who knows what his motive was yeah, to support. Anything. But, uh, but he agreed with it too. So, 
Um, so I had my captain, who's a staff officer, and the union president both saying that, yeah, do it. And yeah. uh, n- really nobody said anything. The only, the only uh, actually even going into my meeting with the chief, you know, he, he's like, well, this will never uh, impact you in the future. I'm like, okay. But, uh, you know, in terms of like promotion or stuff like that, yeah. and I'm like, okay. But, uh, um, so yeah. Yeah, those were my my captain for sure. Just because of how rah rah the fire yeah. department was, I didn't think he would allow me to do it and or be so easy about it. So then that makes your joke of like we all did our time on the ammo. It's now now it's funny. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yes. it's a funny thing for us. Yep. not everybody knows that story. Yeah, that like, yeah. no, <laughs> your, your time on the ambulance was during paramedic school. Yep, <laughs> and then you were legally and that was it. <laughs> not too. Yeah, so I think I was a stipend paramedic from. Uh, would have been like the end of June to the middle of October, I think. Yeah. Not to double check because uh, one of the guys has an alert set in his phone. So every year he texts me on that and wishes me happy anniversary. <laughs> so <laughs> happy retirement. Yep. <laughs> um, but I do think you're the perfect person to bring on this because um, you've you've expressed your uh, willingness or your not desire. I don't want to overplay it, but during like COVID and during some other times, you'd be like. I actually do wish I could take one for the team right now for some mm-hmm. of these guys and like jump in a little bit, yeah. you know? And I don't know if this is a, a symptom of that over the past like three, four years of just the craziness that went on, but there are a bunch of guys that are below me who just throw a fit when mm-hmm. it's time to just PIC or be, or, or drive the ambulance, you yeah. know? And I think as a, a senior member and a driver in the department, you do have a good perspective on that, you know? Yeah. And you know, our, ours is a little tougher because now we've got picks that are, you know, a benefit that we've earned yeah. um, with station bidding. And so um, we're kind of set up that if you're a junior, you're going to do a year of probation on the engine. Uh, you might catch a little more time after that on the engine. And then you're probably going to do four or five years, mostly straight on the ambulance. Yeah. And then you're going to have an opportunity to pick fourth position on an engine, which is going to let you do probably half of your time on an ambulance and mm-hmm. half on an engine. Um, which those, is a massive improvement. It's a massive improvement because we had guys before, like my contemporaries that drove the same ambulance for like nine years straight. And yeah. there was no hope for them getting off of that. You know, that's what I did. I didn't, I didn't get off the ambulance. So I started doing the acting program. Yeah. And that's a large reason why I got in the acting program. I was like, well, it's the, it was still the fastest way off an ambulance. That's what it was advertised as. I would say still now, probably the guaranteed fastest way off of the ambulance is to get promoted and get to an engine. You, it's probably once you get promoted now. at our yeah. department, you get more engine time. Yeah. And then, then obviously you make it to an engine at one point in time. I think but, it's more of a tie now because I think like eight to 10 years is about when. Probably about. Yeah. Yeah. When it used to be like 14 to 16. Yep. And uh, it was just an, it was just like one after the other. Like I decided, okay, I'm going to try to get off the ambulance. I'm going to go for promotion. And then as I was going through my acting time, I was committed to it then, and I was taking the test the second time, and they're like, okay, now we have shift picks. And then I saw all the, the seven other guys I got hired with that were still, the, the five other ones that were still back end, yeah. they were instantly off the ambulance mm-hmm. at like seven, eight years. And I was like, I just married myself to this thing for another four to six years. Yeah. Like, what did I do? Yep. Um, so yeah, now I think eight to 10 is the, the scope for getting off it through attrition. And then like 10 ish is like promotion yeah. or less. But yeah, it was, if you want to get off the ambulance, you want for promotion at 10 years to, to get off it in 14, hopefully. Yeah. And now I'm at 16. I've gone up at 16. I'm hopefully the next six months going to be off it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, based off of that, that comment on Instagram though, I think, you know, my strategy probably would be to just talk to that person face to, because if you were, if you're expecting them to give up a suppression yeah. day to you, you're going to be pissed off. Every time, every time, you know, <laughs> so I would talk to that person and be like, Hey, you know, can we set up some sort of rotation? It doesn't have to be equal, but like, can I get an engine day a month or something like that? Or, or, or just something like that. Yeah. And make that person tell, you no, and then at least, you know, where you stand. Yeah. And then you can address it further up if you'd like to. And then you can go to an officer and be like, listen, I need, a, I need a periodic break. Is yeah. there a way that we can figure that out? You know? And the more you think that someone's going to give it to you, the less you're going to get it. Like nobody's, yeah. nobody's looking out for the person on the ambulance to be like, we need to get this guy a day off, you know? <laughs> and certainly yeah. a back end guy is not looking to be like, oh, I'll give up my day, Please. you know? Yeah. So, um, that would be my advice is, is just, uh, have a, have a conversation with the person first and, and hopefully they're, they're in agreement with you. 
And if not, then you can address it with somebody a little more formally. Yeah. Do you, do you think you would have the guts to say no if that conversation came to you? I don't think I would because you're setting up your, you're setting yourself up for a fall also. Right. I'm going to need a trade eventually. Mm -hmm. I'm going to need help eventually. Right. And if someone told me no, like I know there's a couple of guys who like, who have been asked like, Hey, can we set this up or whatever? Right. And their answer is no. When I'm forced to do it once a month as a paramedic in charge, that's my donation to the ambulance. I'm not doing it as a favor besides that. Right. And I was like, you do know you have to rely on these people for stuff eventually. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens is now that guy's not getting trades. Right. Um, He's not getting the benefit that other people get, which right, wrong, or indifferent or unfair. That's the Mm -hmm. way it goes because he's not willing to take one on the the chin for them. So they're not going to take one for him. I don't know if I'd be able to sit there and be like, no, I'm not doing that. No, you know, and and, and, I mean, it depends on the dynamic of the department too because if the person who's requesting it is a well-liked person, possibly with that with some more senior people yeah. you know and then they go and they're like hey you know so and so said no to doing a rotation with me now you have possibly senior guys coming down yeah. on that back end person be like come on you know so it's like right. um yeah I, I think i would have a real hard time saying no in that <laughs> sense you know <laughs> dude um unless i truly thought it was unfair and the guy was just being a wino but uh do you think so how would you approach Let's just say you were a paramedic, like in an alternate universe. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I would have a hard time knowing how to approach a situation and be like, I need a break off the ambulance. Because a break implies a break. There's a lot of people that will scoff at that. Be like, mm-hmm. you don't need a break. You're yeah. just being soft or something mm-hmm. like that. How would you, or how have you seen people approach that in the past using like the specific terminology or words they did? Not to say I need a break because I'm tired, but like, do you have to broach into like the, Hey, I'm, my mental health is wrecked. Or can you be like, Hey, it'd just be really nice to do something different for a day. Like, what have you seen on that front? Cause that's a tough, that's a tough one to bring up. Um, you want to come on too strong and be like, I need a break. Yeah. And then you work and nothing bad happens. You're like, I still um, need a break. Unfortunately in our, uh, world, that's still probably considered a little, little weak, even though we're doing a better job of acknowledging mental health stuff. Yeah. But I'm guessing if you have, three or four years on and you come on, you're like, I need a break. There's a lot of people like, you don't need a break. You don't know what it's like, you know? Um, you know, I, I don't know if you come in with a, with a solution and and look at like when your next Kelly day or vacation day is and see if you can like butt it up there. And then that's like a good break for you as you get two shifts straight off of the ambulance, you know? Um, but yeah, I, I would probably not come in right away hot with, I need a break off of the ambulance. Like, um, it's also hard because I definitely asked for more engine time before I got promoted, knowing that it was going to be like a 50, 50 split. Yeah. Of like, Hey, I need some reps on fire alarms and yep. like gas leaks and, and silly stuff like that. Like mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't, I don't need to be put on a training plan, but I need to become more familiar well, with that's this thing. the problem too, is if you come in yeah. of saying I'm weak over here, you don't want to like open up a training plan for yourself sure. either, you know? Um, so I would, but I would, I think I'd be more comfortable approaching it from a training side of like, Hey, it's been four months since I've been on an engine. Yeah. Can I get on one just to, th- to throw a few ladders and, and run some calls? And they might say like, well, why can't you throw ladders when you're on the ambulance? Right. Like, well, maybe I on guess some that's departments. The step you go to if you've already had the discussion with the person and they say no, mm. and then you, you need to justify your reasoning a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, department needs, you know? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have that as like a peer to peer be like, well, I, I just not. I feel, don't feel comfortable throwing ladders. Cause then I'd for sure be like, well, let's go throw them together. Now, you know? Like. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also pro tip. I know you and I share this opinion. If you insist that you need a break, don't take overtime on the ambulance. Definitely. Don't. <laughs> like that's yeah. Not, yeah. Your argument goes right out the window. Right out the window. And then you become the figurehead for yep. the person who should not be doing something. Yes. Yeah. And we, if we see, we've seen that before too. I need a break. I'm done with the ambulance. I can't stand this thing anymore. Like, why are you taking your gear? Well, I got overtime on Amos for time like, and a half. <laughs> <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the yeah. magical resilience yep. fairy shows up and mm-hmm. sprinkles a few dollars on you, yep. and you're good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, don't do that. Um, but yeah, I guess approach it with a person, and but sometimes, like, there was a retired cop that I still follow on Instagram because he does a lot of jujitsu stuff and and leadership stuff, and this came up too of like rookies in the police department complaining that they have the night shift or overnight or something mm-hmm. like that. And people were asking him like, how do I approach this and how to do this? And he's like, yeah, sometimes it sucks to suck, pal. That's part yeah. of the deal. And so, you know, you got 30 years here. Yeah. You might eat 10 of them on ambulance. You don't want to be on him. And that's the what reality is, is like our, de- 
our department at least is set up that you you benefit from the system at a certain point, you yeah. know? And so it's like, at some point it's your time. And, um, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it sucks to suck. <laughs> it does. You know, I don't want to get into the old guy stuff of being like, you know, we, well, we all had it that way at some point in time, but you know, uh, it's, it did suck to suck in the beginning. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I know? think there's a difference though between acknowledging that of like, yeah, sometimes you just got to do this and mm-hmm. it's a job that's not always fun. There's a difference between that and saying, why well, suffer through it? So now you have to suffer through it. Yeah. Like, first of all, you don't have to suffer through it. You have to do it. It doesn't have to be the worst thing in the world every time. Right. A lot of that comes from your crew and your own personal outlook on it. Mm-hmm. Even on the busiest ambulances I've been on, I can think back of a lot more fun times in the station, separate from the dozens of calls I had to run right. you know, throughout the shift or, or the time I was there. So, um, yeah, I don't I mean, I will say too, like you do know what you're getting into coming into this industry. There shouldn't be like too many surprises yeah. as to what the the job is now at this point, you know. Especially not after the first year. Correct. Right? Yeah. Like you've seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think all most people know at this point in time if you don't want to be on an ambulance, you shouldn't test for a department that runs their own EMS, you know? <laughs> right. So like cuz it's, right. it's just the way it is. Um so yeah, that's about as good as answer we can give to that one. Yep. Sometimes it sucks to suck, and sometimes it sucks that they suck. <laughs> that's yep. how that goes. Uh, let's do this video real quick, dude. Yeah. That workout video. Did you make it all the way through? Mm-hmm. So I a little bit of background. I put a video up. I sent a video to Kurt and another one of our friends. I came a bunch of my friends separately, and it was a dad making forcing his kids to work out. Yeah, like forcing them to. Mm-hmm. They were not in and enthused about it they were not involved in it the mm-hmm. mom got in on it was like yeah being weird about just stuff chirping yeah it was just a weird video dude and Dudes. then but the comments were split of like yeah dad you're kicking ass and mm-hmm. like what are you doing yeah and like why are you what is this doing for them and uh i'll post it again on maybe i'll share it to the page maybe i'll even figure out how to put it in the video here mm-hmm. probably not but super awkward yeah it felt like the video was for him not for the kids Correct. Is that? Did you get that feeling? Yeah, I spent too much time on this. But, but, go go but ahead yeah. then. Yeah. So you have thirteen minutes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah. So here's the thing: is like, if you are, he is not making that video to show you how to train kids. Right. If you dig deeper as to what his business is, his business is to um, be basically a life coach and a training coach to uh, people who want to be alpha males. And so, uh, good for you for looking at yeah, it. Yeah, I, I couldn't. That's his service. Deeper. So basically, he offers. So basically, every day you play a game, you get a. Your goal is to score three points. You get a half a point if you do your workout. You get a half a point if you finish your nutrition. You get one point if you do a journal, and you get one point for your spiritual connection that day. You really went in on this guy. I did because <laughs> I wanted to. I wanted to learn. Uh, Keep so, talking. Keep okay, talking. So that video is geared towards alpha dads. And this is how I treat my kids because that's how, you know, if you read some, a lot of the comments, it was like, kids need this. This is how it was when we were kids. So he's he's connecting to his base of clientele who he's selling programs to. He's not saying this is how to train kids. Right. Because there's no love for those kids for what they're doing in, in that right no. there. And all he's doing at that point is he's showing his kids how to stop at a predetermined number and not do anything more. Yeah. And that's what that whole video was, was like, Get to 10, and it's like, you know that kid was not doing 11. It was hard to get him to do one, and there was zero chance he was get, developing the passion to do the 11th rep. Yeah. Uh, but that was definitely made for his people. Uh, and then if you dig through the wormhole, you know, it's like you got the alpha males who do his program. Well, sure enough, if you click on the wifey, she's got her same thing for females. Oh. And so it's just, it's all. <clears throat> yeah. It's just Greg Glassman packaged differently, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> dude, it was just and, so and gross. I went, I went too far because then it's like, if you look at any pod, so he, so that guy used to be a firefighter. Do you know that? No. Okay, so he was a firefighter, paramedic. I didn't even know I was tying it in if, that if way. If you Google his name, basically, yeah. it's how do I go? How, I went from being a broke firefighter to a multimillionaire. Oh, thank God. Well, the good thing is, is California, uh, <laughs> they're very transparent with their salaries. That person was not broke. <laughs> As of 2021, he was making $200,000 a year from the fire department. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm telling you, man, this is five minutes. I, feel, I felt like goob going. 
<laughs> True Detectives. Are really oh yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, so that. Oh so, but also playing into his fan base of you can be nothing and turn into something. <laughs> Here it is, broke firefighter to uh, uh, alpha dad. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, so yeah. So that's that was my uh, research into Dude. it. <laughs> I just got grossed out by the video. The video was awful. It was just a gross video. Yeah, everything. About the it. amount of times he looked at the camera. Yep. The amount of times that. He, you could tell he was forcing, sticking it to these kids, mm -hmm. and they were just completely not receptive. Yeah. And at one point, it was awkwardly put in where he almost had to. It looked like he had to remind himself, like, "Oh shit, I gotta." Yeah. I forgot I gotta be like a hard ass right now. Mm -hmm. Where he was like, "Oh, you didn't count to twelve. That means you gotta start over again." Yeah. Or and it's also I don't know if it's just because of this, or trying to create stuff that I see, like the why do you put the bodies in the middle of the rink kind of thing mm -hmm. and the lights facing on him. Yeah. Who was recording it? So either they had someone, <laughs> so like the mom know. wasn't recording it. Mom she was in on it. Yeah. Unless they have another kid that wasn't working out. That I was think recording that's it. the case. There's five, they have five kids. But here's so the thing is like you have, let's, let's give them the, not the benefit of the doubt and say mm -hmm. it wasn't. He hired yeah. someone to record this morning routine, right? Mm -hmm. The kids obviously don't do that. Want to do that every day. Correct. Now you're going to bring an outside person and record them not being good at it or mm -hmm. want to do it with your dad berating you. Yeah. And then your mom starts tripping you in it. Mm -hmm. What? Like what are we doing? Yeah, and if you if you so if you remove that and pick away at it more, everyone's on social media now. If you think that uh, the seniors in that kid's high school, where that kid's trying to try out for something, don't get a hold of something oh, like that and use it against them, yeah. like you're you're totally wrong. If they see that on the internet, like yeah. they're definitely coming after that kid, you know. And the squats look terrible. Which <laughs> the dads they were his yeah. air squats were. They're rough. Kyphotic and gross. Mm -hmm. um, I, that dude, your dive on that was incredible. When it was I was about ten minutes of work, and I had to cut it off because I'm like, all right, I'm done. Uh, it doesn't this take much, much, right? No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Salary record. Dude. Um, so what I wanted to, I also don't have much experience in this area either, but I know that's not the way I want to do it. Yeah. What I've been trying to do with Nathan is simply create the opportunity to work out with me mm -hmm. and it literally lasts two minutes yeah where i'll be on the bike or i'll be doing a workout with like a kettlebell and uh he'll start doing his swings on his rings downstairs or like climbing on the wall mm -hmm. and then he'll want to do something i'll be like buddy i'm doing this right now like i'm right in the middle of it why don't you come work out with me yeah he'll get annoyed and then walk away i'm mm -hmm. like well that was a pretty good session for today yeah. <laughs> like that's and and uh yes we bribe him and say like like afterwards when I have my protein shake, they have their own muscle shake mix, which is like Ovaltine or Nesquik or something like that. Yeah. And uh, he'll be like, I want one. And so he'll be like, I want a muscle shake. Like, well, did you work out? And then, okay, if, we, if you do 10 squats and five push ups and two laps around the house, we'll give you a muscle shake. Mm -hmm. I'm not, a, I don't see that as a bad thing. Like mm -hmm. incentivize that a little bit, right? No, definitely not. But yeah, to like, to think about standing Nathan in the corner and filming him and be like, five more squats. Yeah, You're no. an athlete. Quit. Quit pretending to be soft. Yeah. And, but also not having the natural ability to be a coach like that, mm -hmm. like forcing someone else's coaching style. Yeah. I will say, this is why it just frustrated me also. If you take the, if you wrote down everything he said and put in a script and had someone apply the appropriate emotion to it, it probably works. Probably. Like you said, like, hey, I need you to, I need some emotion. I need some positive energy. Let's, but then, but he was saying that in a scolding way. Like, yeah. I need positive energy. Right. <laughs> like, what? But it like also gross. like yeah, and it's like you do that in front of in front of an audience, you know that yeah. those are like those are conversations you have one on one with your kid, yeah, you know, so that they can look you in the eye and and understand what's going on, and you can explain versus yeah. just yelling at them on camera while whoever's filming you and the <laughs> your mom's chirping in. <laughs> God, that was the worst. And then I did see the someone in the comments said like, you could see the you could see the love and the hug you gave him in the end. That's what saved this video for me. Where he basically grabbed him and yeah. choked him until the kid like started right. laughing to get out of it. Like, <laughs> yeah. let me go. Yeah. And he's like, I love these kids. Yeah. <laughs> get out no of here. doubting that. <laughs> what we're contending is the love of your kid for what he's doing. <laughs> oh, dude. So overall gross. I'll, I'll have to find a way to, I'll post in my stories a few more times. I didn't check the poll on that before coming in here, but it was like 50, 50, really? you go dad and do more harm than good. Yeah. I just, I stand fast that he was doing more harm than good. Those I kids mean, are not going to grow up and be like, I remember those good days when I, I this. think for nothing else. So here's, and we have the view behind the curtain mm. of kids coming in away from their parents mm. 
and us being able to put the pieces together that they no longer enjoy what their parents are making them do. Yeah. And that's what this is to me is that this kid from this experience is not looking to further himself. He's looking to stop at a predetermined thing. Yeah. And that that's going to carry over to everything else. And it's, it's not, it's not all of a sudden going to switch for him and be like, I love this. Yeah. Because my dad makes me do all this. You know? Yeah. I didn't see, I didn't see the uh, installation of any beneficial lessons in that. Correct. Yeah. I was like, well, this kid's never going to work out again. The next time his dad says, come out to the garage, we're working out. It's, he's going to be like, is there a camera out there? Mm-hmm. Am I going to get yelled at today? And yep. Post on the internet so you can make more money. Yeah. And then his mom going to yell at me. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then like, is it really worth the dirt bike you're going to buy me? Cause I'm sure he's flooding him with gifts on the back end since he's a millionaire now. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So he's probably just, I've drawn a lot of conclusions about how he buys his kids love, yep. treats them like a dick and then makes up on the back end. Probably with ice cream. He's probably like the guy in dodgeball who like <laughs> <laughs> he cries over pizza yeah. and like rubs it all over him or whatever. <laughs> I don't know, man. Maybe he's getting too deep. Um, Okay, well, I'm going to have to subscribe to his page now to get more content. I'm definitely blocking him after this. <laughs> okay. Enough. I'm not going to tag him. He's not the kind of person that you can have a conversation you know, with. I'm won't. sure of it. First of all, didn't even know, but he's a fireman. You can't have a conversation with that. For sure. Um, and now he's a millionaire, so forget about it. Mm-hmm. The only thing worse than a broke firefighter is one with money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but on the flip side, he probably has Max, and he can watch True Detective on time. Probably. I'm like, broke fireman. <laughs> I choose to be broke. Um, anything else, dude? I don't think so. All right. <laughs> That's a good deep dive. That was way more than I expected, man. Not that dive. Came, came with some research <laughs> that today. Was perfect. That might be the most work you put into one of these episodes. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'll, start, I'll keep sending you stuff that pisses you off perfect. and uh, get you all riled <laughs> up. Uh, all right. Check out Rescue One CBD for 0.000% THC CBD and Fourth Frontier Heart, mod- heart Rate Monitoring Strap. The only one with lead to EKG capabilities. Got through that time. Keep being more capable and durable on the job and away from it. And uh, be a four-shift firefighter.